Good day, good people. Energized Coach coming to you. Uh, just a little bit of an update. I've done several vi videos uh, about the coronavirus, not going real deep into uh, what it really is. But I did do a video where many of us are going out and we're buying these cleaners and we're doing things that could potentially cause us to maybe cause them a problem or not particularly protect us. But uh, killing things like bacteria, which coronavirus is not a bacteria, it's actually a, a virus. Bacteria has DNA, coronavirus has RNA, ribonucleic acid. Not going to go too technical into that. But, you know, I also want to encourage those that if you are indeed following what the state has done with your state at, stay at home order, you are practicing social distancing and you're doing whatever is necessary to protect yourself as well as your family. Uh, this will, we, we will get past this, we will get over this, and you will go back to your life as normal. Now, I know that a lot of this has probably sparked some things in your brain and things that, that you thought about where you may need to think about how we do things differently in regards to our diets, in regards to our preparedness, in when something like this happens, uh, making sure we have a little something on the side that's able to sustain us financially until we're able to get through a crisis and be able to get back on our feet and do what is necessary. Uh, keeping things around like maybe, I don't know, candles or power generators. Uh, I think about, one of the things that I think about was, uh, well, one of the things I thought about, sorry for the context, uh, is that I have rain barrels that holds 110 gallons of water. There are two of them together. They're both 55-gallon drums, and they hold 110 gallons of water. So if I was able to create a filter system and be able to filter that water, I could make it potable so I could be able to use it, if necessary, to be able to consume by drinking it directly or using it to uh, wash hands, uh, drink, to stay hydrated, to be able to cook food or whatever the case may be. So there's something that I've done there. There also, the season hasn't come, but spring had, did start on March 19th. So I did pot some, I'm sorry, plant some uh, seeds and pots so that we could also grow some food. And then of course, those of you who know me know that I already have chickens where uh, I get eggs daily from the, my chickens. So I have what is necessary, if possible, the things I can be able to keep during these types of crises until we get through them with chickens that are laying eggs, we have vegetables that we plant in the garden, be able to put them aside, and to, to be able to do some of the other things. I not, do not have some of the things that I should have, so for me, there are some things that I know that I need to consider to be able to make sure that I am prepared to be able to continue to live the way I will need to live as well as be able to provide and do what I need to do for my family. So if you are indeed, you know, having these things, worrying about these things, I wouldn't worry too much, especially if you are doing what you're supposed to to take care of yourself. If you are, again, not only practice social distancing and doing whatever is necessary to keep your home as well as yourself free from any viruses that you may have come, come in contact with, you should be, you'll be fine. Uh, I, I have shared many things. I, I will go through them very briefly. You know, I talked about fasting. Fasting has a way of putting whatever is wrong in your body back together again. It will also help your body detox from things because it doesn't have to spend time digesting food, but fixing whatever is wrong whatever it is that you've done from, whatever it is that you've eating, eaten, I'm sorry, or what it is that you've been exposed to and finding a way of getting rid of it and attacking it because it's not working doing other things. Uh, drink your water, making sure that you're drinking enough water every day to be able to clear your body. Also get the proper cleaning of your colon and getting out those things that you've eaten so that it doesn't hang around and cause a problem. I mean, anything you know that hang around too long, it's not to go bad if it goes bad. If it goes bad on the outside, it definitely can go bad on the inside and cause you to have problems. As well as also eating foods that are rich not only in the macronutrients like your fats, proteins, and sugars, but also 
uh, things that are micronutrients, the, the iron, your vitamin D, and all the other nutrients necessary for your body to function and to be able to resist the things that you come in contact with. So hopefully you're finding something to do, keep yourself busy, and not really uh, cause yourself to become worried because if you get worried, they start to go to solic solicit the hormone cortisol, which is going to weaken your immune system and make you susceptible if you so happen to get come in contact with the coronavirus, which will limit your, your chances of doing something necessary. So with that being said, I'm going to go into right now what it is that we know so far in regards to the coronavirus um, to this date. Now, we know that it started in Wuhan, China. And in Wuhan, China, to date, they have 81,171 confirmed cases. Now, although they have these confirmed cases, they have 73,159 who have recovered. And unfortunately, they lost 3,277 people. Uh, condolences go out to those who had to lose their lives as a result of this virus, but those who recovered hopefully can share or show those who have suffered what they could do to be able to keep be safe and to recover from this uh, coronavirus. It also affected Italy. The Italians had to deal with it as well. I mean, they also they also show f coverage and footage of their. Uh, what they had to do to lock down uh, Italy. They have, to date, 63,927 confirmed cases with 7,432 who've recovered. Unfortunately, they lost 6,077 people to the coronavirus. Again, condolences to those folks as well. Um, Spain, 39,675 confirmed cases. 3,794 recovered from coronavirus. Unfortunately, they lost 2,800 people in Spain. So, these are the people who are in places where that live, places other than where I live and most people that I know live, which is right here in the United States. The United States currently has 46,549 confirmed cases. They have 333 who have recovered. But unfortunately, we lost 593 people. And again, my condolences goes out to those who lost their life as a result of the coronavirus. So, let's talk about the statistics worldwide. Worldwide, we have 394,827 confirmed cases, where we have recovered 103,710. And so altogether worldwide, we lost 17,226 people. I, I, I really feel that they should not have died as a result of the virus. Um, they are, they, they are no longer here. Hopefully, we're learning our lessons and maybe taking some information from those who did lose their lives, either be where they may have come in contact, where they were just doing their normal everyday activities and unfortunately contacted this disease and did not make it. And those who have recovered, you know, will share their stories of what it is that they had to deal with while they were getting treatment or doing quarantine themselves while they are getting over this deadly disease. So now that we understand and know, this is what we know so far regarding the statistics of uh, what it is, let's talk about the coronavirus itself. The coronavirus disease, COVID-19, is an infectious disease caused by a new virus. Again, I talked about viruses in the video when I was giving you the difference between what a bacteria and the virus is. Bacteria's, bacteria is alive. It has a nucleus. It has oxygen. It uses oxygen to live, and it also uh, uh, exhales carbon dioxide as a waste product, just like any other living organism. Not other other, I'm talking about those that are of a biome that is connected, that, that is considered living other than that of, that is a plant life, like algae or, tree, they, they, or trees or plants. They use uh, carbon dioxide as they ingest it and they have oxygen as a waste product. The disease causes respiratory illness like the flu 
with symptoms such as cough, fever, and of course symptoms that have shortness of breath. Some of them, you may have had that if you've gotten ill before, if you've gotten a cold or gotten the flu or maybe even got contracted pneumonia like myself, you would know what that feels like. You can protect yourself by, and you have already know about this, washing your hands, avoid touching your face, and avoid close contact with people. Again, practicing social distancing, having that meter to three feet away from people that are, that have the coronavirus, the COVID-19. Now, although you may not know whether a person has it or not, um, you should treat everyone as if they do. And we shouldn't worry about how anyone feels because you, if you don't know if you've gotten it, so you're protecting them from getting it. And you don't know if they have it, so you need to protect yourself from getting it if you do not have it. So practice of social distancing is a, good, is a good practice. So, again, we, we know how it spreads. So it spreads through touching and having contact with an affected person, coughing and sneezing. So, and in order to avoid that, we know that if we are at least three feet, some folks say six, um, in other place, cases a meter away from someone, that the virus doesn't have a chance of infecting you because it will just simply just go to the ground or go to whatever surface that it may rest on after an infected person has sneezed or coughed. If you do so happen to come in contact or whatever the case may be as far as on a surface what have you, a good practice, of course, is to make sure that you wash your hands as well as avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouths where your mucous membranes exist, where it has a chance that if you touch the surface and touch any part of your face, you have a chance of this virus coming in. And it takes a while before you see symptoms because they've stated it could be anywhere from 2 to 14 days before you see symptoms or know that you have it. But even if you haven't spread it or know that you have it, you do have the ability to be able to spread this disease without knowing it now one of the things i think about is when you look at the numbers of folks who have contracted disease versus those who have recovered there may be chances that you can be able to practice the social distancing make sure you're washing your hands and doing everything necessary by cleaning your surfaces with uh, cleaners that actually state that it kills germs, not just bacteria, because some that just kill bacteria. Others that you want, you want it to be able to say it kills 90.9% of bacteria and viruses. Now there are some good bacteria and there's bad bacteria, but in this particular case, to play it safe, let's make sure that we take care of whatever is necessary, even though we do need the good bacteria. I went into that. When I talked about that, when I was giving you, telling you the difference between what is a bacteria versus a virus. Bacteria is alive, a virus is not. A virus needs a host. Once it gains its host, it takes control over that host. And then what it does is, as it takes control, it produces more. And then from that host, it produces more viruses. And then, of course, the way you do it, your body's natural response to get rid of a virus is when it comes to the infect your nose, you sneeze, or if you get as high as your lungs, you cough, so that the body can get these things out of you so that you can get the relief you need from being sick from these viruses. So, uh, it, in conclusion, in talking about this, um, we know that there are a lot of people who got impacted by this virus. We know some will recover. I guess it's based on a lot of factors, chiefly because of your immune system. So if you're doing what is necessary to take care of yourself in regards to what you're putting in your body, then you should be well with, if you so happen to come in contact with this, you'll be able to recover from the disease. Um, we know that this is new. It's not something that is similar to the same one. I think I did a video on whether or not Hey, is the coronavirus new or not? If you've never heard of coronavirus, what you we did have them before. They just didn't put the coronavirus tag on them. For example, remember the SARS, the sudden acute respiratory syndrome that they had, something that they had in China. Didn't get to the magnitude of what the, this COVID-19 did, but it had. We also had uh, MERS, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome where that you also, again, was also a type of coronavirus. 
but it didn't get here and didn't have an impact on those uh, that are right here in the United States. Practice social distancing. Continue to practice social distancing and then wash your hands very frequently. You can't wash your hands enough. I mean, I you don't know if you see my hands. My hands are probably very dry now because of how often I wash mine, even though I'm adhering to what the governor of the state of Ohio stated when it comes down to adhering to stay at home, practice this social distancing and keep yourself from being impacted from this. I also, even if I do go out, I fast, I drink lots of water, I also uh, eat responsibly and take in things that will help my immune system be uh, intact so that if anything happens, I'll have a fighting chance against this virus. And this disease, this disease spreads, spreads through people coughing if it's impacted their lungs, sneezing if it's happened, in, happened to be in their nasal cavity. And then also when they do sneeze, uh, this is something that a lot of folks aren't aware of. It's a virus that can live uh, for two to 14 days, depending on the conditions. So certain services that don't survive. It also does not live very long, something that you probably also need to know in certain temperatures. Uh, this virus can be uh, killed when it is, it, it, it is up against extreme heat. It cannot live under extreme heat. I believe the temperature, I mean, I, I would encourage you to look it up, is about 80 degrees. It is 80 degrees, is, I believe is the maximum temperature. You go above 80 degrees, the virus cannot live. So apparently when you think about when the, the summer months come in and temperatures are pretty hot, uh, the survival rate, as long as we continue to practice and do good things, we probably won't have to deal with any issues regarding uh, this coronavirus. But in the meantime, listen to what it is that your governors have told you to do in order to be able to stay away from anything that could cause you effect, meaning on the services, as well as people who may potentially be infected. Some are infected, don't know it yet because the symptoms have not gotten to a point where they start coughing or sneezing. And making sure that you keep the surfaces, you know, in your home and places like this clear of anything that potentially may have had the virus on them. In the meantime, grab a book, uh, start the business that you may want to start, um, educate yourself on things that you want to learn about if you feel it necessary because you want to know more about what a virus is, look up what viruses are and then educate yourself on what you need to do to be able to continue to protect yourself against this COVID-19. In the meantime, continue to live, be happy, do what is, is good for you, spend that vital precious time with your family that you'll never ever ever get back because once that time is gone it's gone and so that yeah, this is a good opportunity to be able to solidify those critical relationships to be able to get an understanding see how your children feel checking with them see how your loved ones feel checking with them let's check on our elderly making sure they're doing well and that there's nothing that's going to potentially put them at risk because if you've listened to any of the news, you know that our elderly are more at risk than most people because of their oxygen saturation and the things that they may have done in their lifetime that may have caused them to become compromised because of their lungs capacity and what has happened with them. So this is the Energized Coach coming to you on what it is that we know so far about the coronavirus. If you are able to see this, that means that you're doing well, hopefully you're doing well, continue to do well. And I'm going to continue to do what is necessary to protect my family and myself. I need you to also do the same thing. I love you. Peace.